Here we're going to talk about the Frank Condon principle, which governs the intensity, or one of the factors that governs the intensity of electronic absorption and emission lines. All right, the Frank Condon principle is based upon the fact that elect electronic transitions occur vertically in potential energy diagrams. Well, what does this mean? Well, let's just say uh, we're looking at electronic transition. So we're going from the ground state to the excited state. Or say we're, let's look at absorption we're going up here. Now what does that mean physically? Well, we have a molecule, say this is our molecule, and within the molecule we have, say, oh, let's make this uh, three nuclei. So we have three nuclei, and then surrounding that nuclei is this electron cloud, and let's call this the ground state. We're now going to absorb a photon. We're looking at absorption here, so we absorb photon. We're going to make the assumption that the electrons will move much more quickly than the nuclei. So right after we absorb that photon, we'll have the nuclei in the same place, but the electronic distribution may be different. Here I'm exaggerating this. But the electrons absorbed the photon and they redistributed themselves in a different way. After the electrons redistribute themselves after absorbing a photon, then here's the electron distribution it still is the same. Well, that's supposed to be the same as that. So let me try to draw it as the same. Let's see, uh, so something like this. After that happens, then the nuclei will redistribute to their new equilibrium positions. So that means that you have a vertical transition in the potential energy diagram. To show that, let's draw a potential energy diagram. This will be the potential energy up this way. And the potential energy is a function of distance. So here we'll have, uh, let's call this, quote, nuclear distances. If we have a diatomic, this would be the bond length, but if we have a multi-atom molecule, more than two, then this will be some combination of all the nuclear coordinates. So this is the ground state here, like this. We'll draw it this way. And superimposed in that ground state, we'll draw some vibrational energy states. And on the average, we have the ground state. This is the equilibrium bond distance there. Then our excited state will not necessarily have the same shape or the same equilibrium distance here. Here's the equilibrium bond distance. There it is for the excited state. And also we'll have in the excited state vibrational energy levels like this. Now what Frank Condon or the principle behind Frank Condon is that when you absorb a photon and say let's this is around room temperature, so most molecules will be in the ground state. When you absorb a photon, you go vertically, <laughs> not drawing a vertical line, up to some excited, that's supposed to be a vertical line. Let me try that again. Here we go, vertical line. Yeah, that's closer. We go vertically. And then once the molecule has absorbed a photon, it'll decay very rapidly into the ground state. So vertically, the equilibrium bond lengths don't change when we absorb the photon. And then uh, once the photon is absorbed and a little while later, things will decay back down here. And now the nuclear, nuclear coordinates, the nuclear distances have changed. So that's what it means to say the electronic transitions occur vertically in potential energy diagrams. We go straight up this way, and then eventually the molecule, eventually being like 10 to the minus 15th, like femtoseconds or so, eventually the molecule will decay to its ground state where it adopts a new equilibrium nuclear distances. Now I'm going to make this statement. The intensity of lines in an absorption spectrum is, or an emission spectrum for that matter, is partially governed by the overlap of vibrational wave functions of the ground and excited states. So why would that be? The intensity of lines in absorption or emission spectrum is given by the transition dipole moment and that will be equal to using the Broquette notation, the wave function, the total wave function in the excited state, which we'll say is state two, dipole moment operator, wave function of the ground state. So this governs the intensity of lines. 
Well, let's uh, then this is the total wave function of the molecule. Let's divide the total wave function of the molecule, say for the ground state, to be equal to approximately, uh, we'll ignore, ignore some factors, but say this is the electronic wave function of the ground state times the wave function, the nuclear wave function. This nuclear means a function of the nuclear coordinates, not actually the nucleus. So we're looking at vibration. And similarly, the wave function for the excited state will divide that into the wave electronic wave function of the excited state and the electronic wave function, which is governed by vibrations of the uh, excited state. And furthermore, we'll say that the transition dipole moment will be a dipole moment for the electronic state or the electrons plus the dipole moment because the nuclei are moving then the vibrational. So when you put these things into the transition dipole moment, we'll get something like this expression. Again, when you put it on the left side in the broadcast notation, this means complex conjugate. Then we have the sum of the dipole moments, or the dipole moment operator. And then here we have the same product of wave functions, except they're not complex conjugate. And that should be a one, shouldn't it? And the sum of the inter or the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. So we can write this as this, and this is the electronic wave function of the excited state, and the nuclear wave function of the excited state, the dipole moment operator for that electron transition, times the same product of wave functions for the ground state, and then we have a similar expression for the nuclear dipole moment operator. This has to do with vibrations. Let's reduce this a little bit. Here we have, let's go back and take a closer look here. This is the dipole moment operator for electrons and therefore it will depend only on the wave function of electrons. So we can pull out the wave function of the nuclear coordinates, the vibration out of that integral and we can rewrite that as the nuclear wave function times the electronic wave function Here's the ground state. Plus, let's do the same thing for the nuclear. So for that, we can pull out the electronic part of the wave function. This is, should be electrons here. And then we have the this expression here. Nuclear part. Just depends on the nuclear coordinates here. Okay, I'm going to make the uh, bold claim that this term is equal to zero. Why is that? Well, this is the ground state, this is the excited state, and note, remember that the wave functions form an orthonormal set. This is, if you want to look at the hydrogen atom, this would correspond to n equal two and this n equal one. And we said that the solutions to the Schrodinger equation give you orthonormal sets. So this is equal to zero. <clears throat> so this term is equal to zero. We'll look at this term up here. We'll just rewrite that here. This is the wave function that depends on nuclear coordinates. And here's the wave functions that depend upon electronic coordinates. Now, if we look at this, there are two terms here, and this will give you an intensity factor. But also, we have this term here, because remember, this is equal to the transition dipole moment, which gives the uh, intensities of absorption line. So this will give you an intensity. This also will give you an intensity. This is the overlap of the vibrational wave function in the ground state and the vibrational wave function of the excited state. This particular integral is called a Frank Condon factor. So if there is no overlap between these two wave functions, then, well, you're out of luck. 
there will be zero intensity for that particular line. You have electronic transition, but then going from one electronic level or one vibrational energy to another, if they don't overlap, that'll be zero. You'll get no intensity. So this is the Frank Condon factors, and that's what we mean when we say the intensity of lines is partially governed by the overlap of vibrational wave functions. That's the Frank Condon factor there. Well, let's take a look at a picture of this. And if we go to the Wikipedia article on Frank Condon principle, here it is. Here they've drawn the potential energy diagram for the ground state and also for the excited state. And then superimposed on that, like we did in our diagram, are various vibrational energy levels for the ground state and also for the excited state. And for each vibrational energy level, they've drawn the wave function. And this is the harmonic oscillator approximation for the wave function. This is nu equals zero. Remember, that's just a Gaussian function. Here, nu equal one. That has one node. It's right there. Nu equal two has two nodes and so on. So we're looking for the overlap of the vibrational wave function in the ground state and the excited state. Here, they've drawn the Wikipedia, and I don't know whoever wrote this article, has drawn a vertical transition. That's what we said because we have very rapid electron redistribution compared to the nuclear distribution. And here we have a wave function here, a wave function here. It looks like the overlap is fairly large. So the intensity of the transition corresponding to here will be large. So the nu equals zero to nu equal two that will be a fairly large intensity transition. Let's look on the other hand at nu equal zero to say nu equal one. So this transition, okay, the intensity there is large. The intensity here is small so that the overlap of the wave function of the nu equal zero in the ground state and nu equal zero in the excited, nu equal one in the excited state is small. That overlap is small. So the Frank Condon factor will be small and that will contribute not too much to the intensity. That's the Frank Condon principle. And then of course once it gets up here after the absorption of the photon it'll decay back down here. Now you have just the reverse. Let's go down here and see where the intensity is large. Well if you go from here to here the nu equals zero to nu equals zero transition that has very little overlap. The wave function here is small, the wave function here is large. So that will essentially have no intensity. However, if you go down here, oh look, the new equals zero to new equal two. Oh, that has fairly large intensity. So that will be a large line in the absorption, or in this case, the emission spectrum. So that's the Frank Condon principle. If you're probably wondering, um, for example, if I put a compound in a solvent and I look at the absorption spectrum, why don't I see individual lines? Why don't I see these individual lines here? Well, the reason is uh, compounds or molecules that are in condensed phases, for example, when they're solution or when they're liquid or solid, they have lots of interactions between themselves and the solvent or other like molecules around. And these broaden out the individual lines so that you can't look at individual lines. You just see a big mess. So condensed phases usually broaden. They obscure the fine structure. So if you want to look at individual lines here, what you need to do is to isolate the molecule from interaction with its environment. And the way to do that, put it in the gas phase. Okay, Frank Condon principle.